What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping in with some Destiny 2 news. Of course, this week we've had the March update, so there's a bit of new content, but also plenty of new gear to check out, and loads of updates to existing things in the game, but also there are bugs. So we're going to break down a handful of different things to be aware of with this update. Bungie have been disabling things, but we'll also go over the rotation for new weapons that are rolling out in the coming weeks. Plus we're going to see the return of some older season gear that includes both armor and potentially weapons. Plus D2 leaks say there's a potential that we'll see a Ghostbusters collaboration for Destiny 2, which is rather interesting. We've got new free emblems, a few cosmetic things to touch on, and a bunch of other items in the video today. So as always guys, I hope you find this one useful, and if you do, a rating below very much helps us out. But now, let's get into it. And firstly, Bungie Help have information about a series of different bugs with this update. And initially, they say due to an issue with disabled Legend and Master Lost Sectors, and players will need to stay tuned for further updates. The reason this happened is that the Quarry Lost Sector was actually glitching out when players were loading in, and players were getting automatic completions. So at reset yesterday, it was possible to literally load an activity and get a series of weapon and exotic drops and things like that, and then go ahead and repeat it. So Bungie have had to disable those. We'll see how long that takes to get fixed. But they also say they're investigating an issue where players who open the detail screen under Eva Levante's Guardian Games information get redirected to purchase Destiny 2 The Witch Queen. Well, that's slightly amusing, but they point out that DLC is not required to participate in Guardian Games. Then additionally, they say they're investigating an issue where players cannot grind with the skimmer if they have hold to crouch selected in their settings. And players can work around the issue by using the toggle to crouch setting until a fix can be deployed. I had seen a whole bunch of folks actually complaining about about this. And so it turns out the vehicle isn't necessarily functioning correctly with certain settings applied. And they also say they're investigating an issue where some strikes aren't working as intended. There have been similar issues in Dares of Eternity as well, where rounds are auto-completing, so somewhat similar to what we saw with the Lost Sectors. There's some activity weirdness going on. But finally, Bungie say they're investigating a problem where players who complete the Prophecy Dungeon aren't able to obtain more rewards after the first clear. And of course, Prophecy is meant to be the featured dungeon this week, but the rewards aren't dropping correctly. It probably has something to do with the rotation being changed to last week. But hopefully they'll get it fixed soon, as there are a bunch of pretty juicy things that we can pick up in Prophecy. And we did break down all of the new weapons and roles that we can pick up in a video yesterday, so you can always check that out if you want. But it's worth pointing out, we do have a release schedule for some of the weapons. This week, we've got the Wild Style Grenade Launcher, which is a new GL for the Nightfall. But next week, on March 12th, the Summoner Auto Rifle and its Adept version will be featured in Trials. That one's been reprised with new perks. Then on March 19th, so in a couple of weeks' time, the Slammer Sword and its Adept version will be featured in the Nightfall. And as we covered yesterday, this sword is looking pretty juicy. In the traits, it's possible for it to roll both Eager Edge and Bait and Switch, which is a first for a sword. So it actually has the potential to be pretty busted. But we'll find out in a couple of weeks. Also that week, we'll see the Prophet Scout Rifle in the Adept version featured in Trials. That's another brand new weapon. Then on April 2nd, we'll get the Return of Iron Banner, where we'll see the Tusk of the Boar, which is the new breech loaded grenade launcher, and the returning Multimax CCX SMG. So, for the next few weeks, there will be some interesting new weapons rolling out in the playlist, and let us know if any of them stand out to you guys. Other items, though, which are likely to drop this season, and Bungie have added a Season of Dawn flashback to the Eververse store. So, it's only in the database at the moment, but it will release this season, and it includes the Season of Dawn armor. So, we've seen this quite a few times now. That stuff will be available once again, typically at a silver cost in the Eververse store. And as we highlighted in the video yesterday, it's interesting because cosmetic ornaments have also been added to the Eververse rotation for weapons like the Recluse and the Hammerhead, which was the machine gun for Black Armory, which very likely indicates the possible return of those weapons at some point later in the season, quite possibly during the Into the Light update. So that's something else to look out for there, but it's not confirmed just yet. Something else unconfirmed though, and Bungie Leaks said, we are possibly going to see a Destiny 2 and Ghostbusters collaboration. So they found some text lines that say add Ghostbusters gear to your collection, and who you're gonna call? And apparently there's no armor in the files, but some gear items and 3D models, and we can see one right there. So again, not confirmed, but there's significant amounts of evidence to suggest that we could see a Ghostbusters collaboration in Destiny 2. And I'm assuming that they're not trolling. Typically, they're a pretty good source. So that's a bizarre and interesting one as well. Despite a couple of bugs though, players in the update so far have been pretty impressed with the skimmer vehicle. And yes, it does make sparrows feel very much redundant at the moment. And Bungie say the skimmer was directly inspired by the Cloud Strider's Skyboard. And the very beginning of the skimmer's development started with a simple question, what is the Guardian version of 
Cloud Strider's skyboard. Imagine a Guardian saw a Cloud Strider zipping around in the air and thought, yeah, that's neat, but how about this? And pulled out something that's cooler, more stylish, and most importantly, fun to use. And given that we've got skimmers in Guardian games, which were supposed to drop after the final shape, it seems very likely that the final shape will have even more of this vehicle type. So there'll be more of them down the road, but it makes sense that this vehicle started development around the Lightfall timeline. Perhaps they'd hoped to get it completed, and it didn't quite make the cut. But there's that thematic tie-in with the Cloud Striders on Niamuna. And generally, like I said, I think these things are pretty awesome, so give us your thoughts about that down below. Another quick mention here, though, and there's a free emblem for the Mass Effect collaboration called Out the Airlock. So if you want to pick that one up, we've now got a redeem code, which you can see on the screen, and I'll link the redeem page for Bungie.net down below. Amidst the conversation about future update, though, recently in a podcast, Bungie had said they are investigating the possibility of adding big team battle-like experiences to Destiny 2's PvP, but there are some tech-related complexities. However, the team are investigating it actively, so that could be potentially interesting. And a big team battle wouldn't necessarily save Destiny 2, but I think totally mixing up some of the gameplay modes for Destiny, even introducing things like the skimmer, are more of the sort of small to medium updates that I think Destiny 2 needs to remain interesting, right? Players weren't anticipating seeing a vehicle like the skimmer for Guardian games. And I think Bungie needs to do more of that, right? Whether it's seasonal events, seasonal activities, and expansions. They need to surprise players with new ways to play the game and elements that we just aren't really anticipating more often. As I think that's one of the reasons that Destiny's gotten more stale over the years, is that Bungie have relied on the same formats with the kind of minimal surprises. And sometimes small things can go a relatively long way. I'm not saying that a skimmer will save Destiny 2, but it's one very small component that's a step in the right direction and mixes up what we expect from the game. Give us your thoughts about that down below. I guess a big team battle PvP mode could kind of fall into that category of something unexpected, potentially stupid and just fun, which Destiny probably needs more of to some degree. So it could be interesting there. Otherwise, though, a very quick final mention, but there are some new cosmetics that have been added. We had things like the Galahad bundle in Eververse this week, which has a second exotic skimmer. It also gets a new ornament for Thunderlord, which is a pretty cool one. And it appears we're going to get a similar ornament, or at least a bundle item, with a Whisper of the Worm ornament called Gilded Cage at some point this season as well. So that looks pretty cool. But for today, guys, that's what we have to speak about in this quick update video. As always, I hope you found it useful. And if you have, a rating below very much helps us out on the channel. Also, be sure to get subscribed so I can keep you up to date with more Destiny content and give us your thoughts and experiences with the March update content so far down in the comment section. Otherwise, though, cheers for tuning in and I hope you guys have an awesome day.